good afternoon. I hope you had a, a good tea or coffee. Uh, so today I'm uh, going to talk about uh, Galera instances. Uh, uh, for those of you who are not aware of it, Galera is uh, basically a transaction-aware uh, communication library, and it is a vital part of uh, a Coder Chip cluster or MariaDB Galera cluster or Percona XDB cluster, uh, which is basically used for synchronous replication between MySQL instances. Anyways. Okay, so synchronous replication. Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, I, I think some of you, or maybe all of you, are uh, aware of async replication in MySQL, which is master-slave type. Uh, so there was a need for uh, synchronous replication. Uh, this is one of the solutions. There's, uh, there are other solutions which I'll just mention in a while. Uh, so this is a synchronous replication. So as as uh, synchronous replication, as you do a commit, it it gets. Uh, it returns only after it's completely replicated to all the nodes. But uh, there's a caveat here is that uh, is, is there is a particular option which ensures that even the apply is uh, synchronous. So to avoid latencies, uh, there, are, there are certain optimizations which are used, which, I, I, which I, I'll discuss after some time. Anyway, so virtualization. So virtualization is uh, why I'm uh, mentioning virtualization with this. So the reason is high availability. I think uh, nowadays with the, everything in cloud or almost everything going to cloud, well, yeah. So high availability is one of the major uh, requirements for that. And uh, virtualization uh, has been used for it uh, in uh, hosting and such things. And uh, the replication, one of the main aims of uh, uh, this clustering uh, with the PXE or Galera is uh, high availability. So that is the commonality which uh, I'm going to talk about now. So as I mentioned, what the Galera and PXE is. PXE is basically MySQL which uses Galera. And how do they work? I think I already did that. And it's a My uh, one of the main things I want to mention is it's uh, MySQL compatibility. It's basically MySQL itself as you talk through the client. Uh, the workings are all behind, uh, uh, behind the scenes. Okay, there's a synchronous uh, replication. I just wanted to mention uh, Google's uh, F1 and Spanner. Uh, F1 is their uh, RDBMS uh, uh, synchronous replication which works on Spanner. Uh, I was reading the paper and they, they, uh, they mentioned in the paper that uh, they, they were earlier using uh, similar replication or sharding and they couldn't, uh, at, at that moment they did not have any solution so they developed their own based on Spanner which uses uh, HDFS if I'm not wrong. No, sorry, it uses Google's big table. Sorry. And there's also MySQL NDB, which is a network, uh, uh, which is uh, currently an offering from uh, Oracle, which was earlier with MySQL. So uh, NDB is the network database, which also provides sharding in addition to uh, synchronous replication. So that's why I mentioned sharding there. So sharding is not part of uh, what I'm talking about now, but it's just another thing. I hope you know what the sharding is, where you split the data for uh, <laughs> performance reasons, among others. Okay, n next uh, I'm talking about, I'll just briefly talk about virtualization and then I'll come to how I'm going to talk about both. So I think popular solutions, uh, you have OpenStack which uses these, KVM and other things. Then you have containers. Okay, I just wanted to confirm, uh, mention that uh, when I say virtualization, I, I don't mean strictly uh, a KVM, but I, uh, it can also mean uh, containers in some circumstances. So, uh, so we have LXE, we have Docker, which, uh, which, is, uh, which uses a modified LXE, if I'm not wrong. And then we have something like zero VM, which are uh, application isolated virtual uh, containers, which is uh, relatively recent from what I've seen. I think that uses NACL, uh, Google's NACL. Uh, so virtualization, uh, constraints. So what are the constraints when we are using virtualization? I think it should be obvious that it's one of them is the hardware uh, uh, and the performance and uh, those things. What are the advantages? Advantages, again, it should be uh, obvious if you are using virtualization, uh, you are uh, you're not underusing your hardware. And uh, so that is one of the things uh, which is applicable here. And, uh, and again, the high availability which I mentioned just a while back. The cloud. Okay. So the data centers. Uh, what is uh, I mentioned uh, WSC? What is a WSC? It's basically a warehouse-style computing. Uh, 
<coughs> I'll just mention it. Okay. So what I mean by that is nowadays uh, the, uh, when uh, companies like Google, Yahoo, or any or Microsoft, any one of them, they have their uh, clusters. Uh, they are not they are uh, not like the hosting hosted uh, servers which we use. Like I mean the servers they have a relationship between them. Uh, they have a common purpose, and uh, and the application is usually distributed among uh, the servers. The other uh, server clusters are like uh, Hadoop or Manta from Joint, uh, some of them. But those are the applications. But this is in general I'm talking about for uh, pair of style computing. And uh, the, again, the demand of such a computing is that the whole uh, section of a data center should behave as a single computer, as, as a single compu computational entity so, uh, when it needs to meet the demands of uh, uh, performance or high availability and things like that. Okay, so uh, for this kind of virtualization which is being used, uh, we have seen like GlustreFS or uh, which, which, which can be used with QMU or uh, Sheepdog which is used as a storage virtualization with QMU again. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if any of you have heard of it. Anyways, so now next I'm talking about uh, application level clustering and how it works. Uh, one, one more thing I just would like to point out is uh, I mentioned Hadoop and Manta earlier. So th those are, uh, some of them have a SQL interface, but those are not purely SQL. Uh, whereas the one presented here uh, with Galera is a purely SQL interface. All the uh, things, uh, all the complexities are hidden behind uh, the class, behind the server, sorry. And the Galera does the heavy lifting of communication between the nodes. Uh, basically, it's not a vanilla MySQL which works. It, it, it actually has uh, something called write-set write -set replication uh, patch, uh, which uh, helps with this. It, it's, it's, it's not in the vanilla MySQL tree. Anyways, uh, so when I mentioned scenarios, uh, yeah, so the warehouse style computing is one of them, and uh, saturation. Uh, so I've seen many deployments of uh, uh, Galera where a uh, single uh, application may not be able to saturate the entire node, so we can have multiple uh, uh, instances. So, th so that is one of the uh, de deployment scenarios. And uh, again, with high availability, you can migrate uh, to other nodes. And uh, one more thing is this kind of synchronous replication, it also works over the VANs. It's not just over the LANs. And it, uh, and it is VAN aware, so that is uh, another thing. And uh, one more thing is the isolation which, uh, which which, is, which may not be required in a WSC scenario, but again, it may be required uh, when, you are, uh, uh, when you are hosting uh, the databases of di uh, different clients. So you don't want them to interfere with each other. Anyway, so this is just, uh, this is where I talk about them uh, uh, in unison. I mentioned the both. So, so some of the things which can be used uh, uh, in such a scenario, uh, I would like to mention. Note that some of these, uh, <coughs> may not be uh, specific to uh, Galera alone. I mean, it can be used elsewhere. And uh, it may not, and some of these terms may be uh, Q, KVM specific, but uh, the, the other things, they have their own uh, corresponding entities. Anyways, so what I mean uh, by bootstrapping is, uh, so you have a node. Uh, one node doesn't make a cluster, right? So you, you need another node. So how do you make it uh, bootstrap? Uh, how do you make another node join this? So it needs the state of another node transferred to this node. So that is what I mean by cloning. The bootstrapping is where you bring up a single node. So that is that's that's fine. But the cloning part is where the state of that node needs to be transferred here, and uh, that is something uh, which is done through a, a method called snapshot state transfer. We call that snapshot state transfer, which transfers the runtime <coughs> state of that node. And so this, this can be done uh, through uh, so something called QCOV0 copy IO, so, uh, which is copy on write, and uh, so that uh, you don't have to copy the original image, and whereas it can share only the base, uh, the base image can be shared, so it reduces the IO considerably. Otherwise, uh, if you have a database like, I don't know, 100 gigs, uh, you'll have to copy the entire thing for uh, no other reason. And then you can also reduce uh, memory footprinting with something like, uh, if you have multiple instances on the same hardware, you can reduce it with uh, KSM, uh, which is the same, uh, kernel, same page merging. 
uh, which uh, induces a certain cost, but it certainly reduces the memory footprint. The cost is in terms of CPU, but it shouldn't be much. And then uh, you can also uh, have a certain scenario like uh, where you can use ballooning. Suppose uh, you have a, a 5.5 node, but and you want to upgrade, and uh, you don't want to bring down the node. So what you can do is you can have uh, two nodes on the same. One of them uh, on a with a short uh, with a lesser memory footprint. So you can bring this down, bring down this node slowly, and bring that up, which is during the upgrades. And you can use ballooning for that. For uh, those of you who are not aware of it, uh, memory ballooning can be used uh, for uh, uh, dynamically resizing the memory of a node. Think of it as like a balloon. So, anyways, uh, and you can use uh, load balancing among the nodes uh, in uh, with that. Uh, and one more thing is, suppose you have multiple instances on the same node and uh, you'd like to migrate them. You can use uh, the block streaming feature of uh, QMU for that, for live migration. And the thing here is that after migration, uh, it's uh, it's since it's a lazy live migration, uh, once this node goes down and that node comes up, the whatever effective uh, synchronization which is required will happen and it, the other node will be up. And the, the need for this may be during, uh, uh, I don't know, hardware maintenance and uh, things like that. And since this is a cluster with the synchronous replication, uh, so it's uh, all the nodes should have the same state, so assuming they are working uh, right. So. Uh, there won't be any downtime as well. Okay. Uh, so uh, one more thing I would just like to add here is that you can use uh, QMU guest agent. Uh, uh, I'm not sure uh, uh, this FTWRL stands for flush tables with read lock, which is basically used with MySQL since it uses uh, usually ODirect with InnoDB. So you use this uh, with the guest agent. So you use it from the host to guest. This is a host to guest communication uh, to in to uh, state that that there's a backup and it has to, so basically the host uh, communicating directly with the application here. So that is the part here. And uh, one more thing is the shared storage. Uh, suppose uh, you have a storage uh, shared between multiple hardware nodes and uh, you'd like, uh, again, the same state uh, cloning. You can either go for, uh, uh, if, the, if you have something like a NAS between the nodes, you can go for something like uh, copy on write or copy on read, which is again supported uh, in uh, QMU, uh, based on whether it's LAN or WAN. Since it's uh, 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 since with synchronous replication latency matters, uh, you need to choose appropriately between them. Uh, okay, how many? Yeah, so I'll just go through this faster. Uh, so in the storage, I would uh, like to mention is uh, uh, if you have multiple instances again on the same node, if you want to pass a common root to the uh, different uh, uh, instances, you can use VertFS to pass the entire uh, route. Uh, with the newer F FHS, it's um, even easier to pass. You can just pass the slash user and and all the nodes should have the common uh, route, uh, so it should uh, work better with package management and things like that. And uh, okay, the network, finally the network. I think uh, latency is the core uh, element in any uh, synchronous replication and uh, it can affect uh, pre-commit stages and all that. So it's very important to keep uh, latency low in uh, such, a, such an environment. And uh, network latency can be high, can be high in uh, uh, virtual, virtualized environments. There, so there is a need to keep them low, as low as possible and as close to the bare metal as possible. So you can either use Vertio Net, uh, which, which is nothing but para-virtualized uh, instances, and uh, instances, or vhost Net, which requires, uh, which is not packaged by default, but it, it provides much higher performance, close to, it's, it's like 90% close to bare metal, I think, or even more, <laughs> it's, it's, it's being developed now, so. Uh, I think uh, that's, so how much is left, okay. So the next, the roles I would like to mention is, uh, even if this is a homogeneous cluster, you may like to assign roles to them of a reader or writer. Uh, this may be required uh, if you have a non-homogeneous hardware so that you, know, you, you don't want certain hardware to, or maybe they are sick hardware, you don't want them to take the load of a writer so you can assign roles of a reader or a writer in such a, in such a situation. 
and uh, and backups uh, you can use dirty bitmap feature of uh, again give him for that yeah i think that's about it uh, if you have any questions please